Hello everyone and welcome sa ating panibagong topic that is online distance learning. So it's ito sa mga modality na ino-offer ni DepEd to continue our education despite of this pandemic. So alam mo na natin ano nga ba ito? First is what is online learning? Basically online learning sometimes called the e-learning. Okay po? Students can be together with their instructor virtually. So, mag-meet si teacher at si student online using computer or tablet, their mobile phone. When using distance learning, students work online at home. So, nasa bahay lang si estudyante at si teacher naman, either nasa bahay or nasa school, then mag-meet lang sila online. All the lessons and the assessment will be done online. So, wala talaga itong physical contact. Lahat, pati mga exams nila, quizzes, and other activities, lahat yan, iti-check din online, i-return niya ni teacher online. Okay? So, what are the five reasons why online learning is the future of this education? First, it's flexible. Next, it offers a wide selection of programs. It's accessible. It allows for a customized learning and it's more cost-effective than the traditional education. So, to learn more, let's discuss this. First, it is flexible. So, pag sinabing flexible si online learning, what is that? Online education enables the teacher and the student to set their own learning pace, then added flexibility of the setting of schedule that fits everyone's agenda. So, si student and si teacher, mag-uusap sila, kailan ba tayo mag-online class? Okay? Unlike the usual traditional class na ginagawa natin today, or yung mga nakaraang uh, school year, di ba nagsiset ng schedule ay ang school? So, this time, si student at si teacher, pwede silang magkaroon ng internal arrangement. Right? For example, o magklase tayo ng 8 a.m. Okay? O kaya magklase tayo ng 9 a.m. So, ganun po. Sila yung mag-set ng schedule or pwede rin si teacher naman din mag-follow si student. Next, educational platform allows for a better balance of work and studies. Having a common agenda between the student and teacher can also prompt both parties to accept new responsibilities. So, ang kinaganda pala dito kay online learning, nagkakaroon ng balance between work and study si students. So, for example, siya ay uh, nag-work. Pwede siyang mag-schedule ng, ay, gabi na lang ako aaten ng class kasi online naman eh. Meron naman mga call center, ay, gabi na, ay, oh, gabi pala pasok ko. Oh. Morning na lang ako magkaklase. Okay? So, that's how flexible the online learning is. Next, it offers a wide selection of program. A growing number of universities and higher education schools are offering online versions. Studying your program online is also a great option for getting an official certificate or diploma. So, alam naman natin, dito sa Pilipinas, may mga nag-o-offer na ng mga online classes. For example, AMA online. Okay? So, di ba yung transaction nila, enrollment, then the payment, also... Uh, their performance assignment exam is online na. Okay? So, kung atin sila ng graduation or not, choice nila. So, ang kinaganda niya, kahit working ka, pwede ka na rin uh, graduate kasi online eh. Although, hindi ka na, kahit wala ka dun physically sa school, makakapag-aral ka pa din. Okay? So, sa ibang universities at sa ibang bansa, ina-accept na siya. May online learning na doon. So, this time sa Philippines, especially in DepEd, i-adopt na natin siya. Alright? So, it is accessible. So, it enables you to study or teach anywhere in the world. There's no need to commute from one place to another. And virtual classroom is also available anywhere. Okay? So, di ba, uh, may mga estudyante tayo madalas sasabihin niyan, ma'am, a-absent po muna ako kasi meron kami ano eh, family reunion eh. Ma'am, birthday ng lola ko, doon gaganapin sa Tawi-Tawi. Eh, ang, ang skwelahan nyo ay nasa Manila. 
So, ang tendency, syempre naman, hindi naman tayo KJ mga teacher eh. Love na love kaya natin yung mga estudyante natin. So, papayagan natin, no? Sige na nga. Basta kailangan, make excuse letter ka ha. Tsaka gawin mo yung mga uh, naii- maiiwanan mo yung lessons. Tsaka activities. Okay? But, with this online learning, kahit nasa tawi-tawi pa si estudyante, makakasabi siya. ba? Diba? Kasi, ang layo kaya ng distance, but because of technology, pwede nilang siyang mag-online class. Makakapag-participate na siya sa klase mo. Magagawa niya na yung activity. ba? Diba? Next, it allows for a customized learning experience. Most of the time, online learning platforms only allow one student at a time. Okay? So, most of the time, yes, especially kung uh, familiar kayo sa mga ESL or uh, mga English class na ino-offer ngayon. For example, sa 5 one to, yung mga ganon, the rare jobs, and marami pang iba. Okay? Di ba one-to-one or minsan three, three students to a one teacher, ganon. I think pwede rin natin yan i-adapt sa atin, sa DepEd, for example, Um, alam natin meron tayong mga fast learners at slow learners. Uh, pag samasamayin natin ang schedule o lahat ng mga fast learners dito sa 8 a.m. plus. Lahat naman ng uh, slow learners, mga 10 a.m. plus. Okay? Hindi mo sila din discriminate. Kumbaga, iba kasi yung teaching approach pag nandun tayo sa fast learners. Eh, mas mabilis din tayong magtuturo. Compare pag nandun tayo sa mga tinatawag ng need more attention, kailangan nating uh, himay-himayin pa talaga ng bongga. Di ba yung mga lectures natin? So, customized learning experience talaga is ma-apply every time na tayo ina sa online classes. Next, I think this would be the last. It's more cost-effective than the traditional education. There's also an often a wide range of payment option that let you pay installment or per class. You can also save money from Uh, the commute and the class material. So, uh, in terms of payment, I guess this applies sa ating mga private school. So, maraming private school ngayon na mag-offer din ng online class. I guess, online payment na rin sila. Okay? Pag sinabi namang per class, di ba, uh, sa colleges, pwede kang mag-enroll ng uh, nine units lang. So, per class yung enrollment mo. Unlike pag basic education per grade level. Nakalagay dyan, um, cost-effective din siya in terms of class materials, di ba? Which are often available for free. Alam naman natin na pag tayo ay nasa school, merong bayad ang photocopy. Alam natin yan, most of the time meron talaga with the minimal fee, di ba? So, ayan yan, pag online learning, of course, this is free. Then, bahala na si estudyante kung gusto niyang i-print or what, it's their choice. Okay? Pero, pag tayo ay naka-offline, yung blended learning na in-offer ni DepEd, lahat na printed materials is free. Okay, ang sinasabi ko pong may bayad dito is pag nag-enroll kayo sa public, ay, I'm sorry, pag nag-enroll kayo sa private, yung mga books, I guess, may bayad siya. Okay po? So, this is one of the biggest question of the teachers and students. How to start an online class? Paano nga ba ito sisimulan? Okay? But first, let's define what kind of online teaching tool are you going to use. So, as a teacher, napakaraming software na available ngayon. Alin ba dito yung pwede, recommended, at nagamit na? So, this is just based on my experience kung ano pa lang yung mga software na nagamit ko. But, if you have a recommendation, you can comment it on the comment box. Okay po? So, what device? Ano ba yung mga device na pwede natin gamitin for our online class? How to facilitate assessment, yung ating mga quizzes and performance? And how to give feedback to our learners? Paano ba tayo magbibigay ng score sa kanila? Paano natin i-deliver, submit or i-re-return? Okay? So, may mga klase kasi ng online learning or online class that is synchronous e-learning and asynchronous e-learning. So, let's start with synchronous learning. So, this is kind of learning that happens in real time. So, meaning dapat si student and si teacher sabay na mag-online. Okay? So, what is the power of this synchronous learning? 
first, the classroom engagement, active discussion, immediate feedback, and personal familiarity. So, gaya din sa uh, traditional class, pag-synchronous learning, sabay na naka-online si teacher, sabay na uh, naka-video call, meaning meron niyang face-to-face but in virtual form. Okay? Sabi kasi nila wala daw face-to-face eh, pero may face-to-face sa synchronous learning. Yun nga lang, virtual. Okay? No physical contact but still face-to-face. Ang ginaganda dito, active in discussion. Every time na magtuturo uh, si teacher, pwedeng sumagot si estudyante. Okay? At immediate feedback agad. Right? For example, nagtanong ako, uh, pag sumagot si estudyante, pwede ko na agad sabihin na tama yung sagot niya. Okay? Next, dynamic learning. Video conferencing, for instance, make it possible to ask question. O, di ba? Katulad ng sinasabi ko kanina, sa gitna ng klase nyo, habang kayo ay nagkaklase online, pwede na kayong magkaroon ng Q&A. Di ba? So, ginagawa na rin natin to in our traditional classes. Instructional depth, so, interact regularly and frequently with your students. So, ayan na halaga, provides regular opportunity for face-to-face discussion. Still face-to-face, yun nga lang. Hindi nyo na kailangan pumunta sa school, makikita nyo na si teacher. Okay? Next, of course, dahil meron tayong mga power, meron din tayong challenges in terms of synchronous learning. So, first is the rigid schedule. Defining characteristic of this learning experience as it is adherence to set a schedule. Okay, so medyo may um, challenges talaga sa schedule kasi what if si teacher ay morning person, magkasat siya ng schedule ng 8am at si student naman is ang gising alauna. Okay, so meron tayong medyo challenges sa part na yun. Then the technical difficulties... We have problem in our internet. Alam natin yan, medyo mahina ang internet ng karabihan, especially here in the Philippines, di ba? Also, their batteries. For example, ang gamit lang ng student is their cellphone and tablet. Di ba, may mga battery ng cellphone na madaling malobat. Okay? Mahirap naman kasi habang naka-online class sila ay naka-charge ng cellphone nila. That is a big no. So, ayun, medyo may problem tayo dyan or yung challenge talaga ng synchronous learning. Amen dyan. Let us now proceed to asynchronous learning. So, this kind of learning wherein the school will provide materials for reading, lectures for viewing, and assignments for completing, and exams for evaluation. So, dito sa type of class ng asynchronous learning, hindi na kailangan na sabay mag-online si student and si teacher, yun nga lang, Uh, may kailangan uh, time frame or deadline na i-meet sa student. Okay? So, the power of asynchronous learning is that first, learning will typically revolve around the material that can be accessed on your own time. Materials might include text-based lectures notes, self-guided interactive learning modules, and pre-recorded lectures and podcasts. So, tayo as a teacher, Magre-record tayo ng ating mga lectures, then pwede nating ipanood sa mga students natin. Okay, so kahit hindi tayo mag-video conferencing dito sa asynchronous learning, magre-record lang tayo on our own, then isa-send back sa kanila. Okay, so yung mga materials naman na sinasabi dito, like text-based lectures, notes, pwede nating i-upload yan online, then i-access na lang ni student. Next, pacing. Read at your pace, view on your time, Complete based on your understanding as opposed to hit a deadline. So, bahala si student kung, um, kung kailan niya tatapusin yung kanyang mga lectures. So, nakalagay kasi dyan, um, complete based on your understanding. So, for example, um, yung topic natin na module 1 or yung last lecture natin for module 1 is kailangan pang intindihin ni student for 2 days. Walang problema doon. Okay? Usually, yung ating module 1 is um, umaabot ng 2 weeks. So, pwede tayong mag-deadline ng 2 weeks. Sample lang po yan. So, ayun. For example, within a week, hindi pa rin masyadong naunawaan ng estudyante. 
on the next week, pwede niya ulit basahin pa yung kanyang module. Basta, magsaset lang tayo ng schedule kung hanggang kailan lang ang module 1. Okay po, that is asynchronous learning. Next, affordability. Countless opportunities for learning that carry a lower price tag because they can be administered without a day-to-day -day instruction. So, self-guided modules, video tutorials, and virtual libraries are offered. So, di ba, uh, unlike sa synchronous learning, mas affordable daw si asynchronous. Kasi nga, kahit hindi laging online si estudyante, pwede. So, paano nangyayari ito? Pag synchronous kasi, kailangan sabayan ng student, si teacher, kung kailan siya online. Let's say, for example, ang um, synchronous learning ay o yung kailang real-time chat, video conference is from Monday to Wednesday. Yun nga lang, si student kasi, nakakapag wifi lang siya sa tita niya every Thursday. So, ang tendency, makiki-download na lang si student ng mga podcast or mga recorded video every Thursday. Mas tipid kasi once a week lang siya mag-access ng internet. Then, the rest, i-download na lang. Okay, so, ayun, medyo uh, mas affordable si asynchronous sa type na to. Then, of course, if we have the power, we also have challenges under asynchronous learning. First is the isolation. So, nakalagay dyan, social media and email simply can't deliver the same kind of intellectual energy as real-time in real interaction. So, this atmosphere is also a less collaborative one. So, dahil nga uh, sa asynchronous, hindi naman nakakaroon ng video conferencing, ang tendency, walang kasabay si student na mag-aral. Okay? Meaning, hindi niya kasabay si teacher, hindi nagtuturo si teacher online, kasi mag-base lang siya sa mga textbooks and videos na ibibigay ni teacher. Okay? Unlike pag-synchronous o yung real-time, di ba? Pag may hindi siya nag-gets, pwede niya agad on the spot itanong kay teacher. Teacher, hindi ko nag-gets. Ano po ba ulit ang ibig sabihin nito? Pag asynchronous kasi, may schedule lang eh kung kailan mo pwedeng i-chat si teacher. Let's say, for example, from Monday to uh, Wednesday, doon ka lang pwedeng magtanong kay teacher from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So, pero pag ikaw ay nakasynchronous learning naman, yung kanina, yung real time, uh, right after the lecture, pwede kang magtanong. Okay, so this is one of the challenges of asynchronous learning, the isolation. Next is the risk of apathy. So some learners tend to lose their enthusiastic without the support and evaluation of their teacher. Alam natin, may mga estudyante tayo ng need talaga ng attention. Diba? Doon nga sa ating traditional class, may mga nahuhuli pa rin. Hanggat hindi natin lalapitan, hindi natin malalaman, eh, hindi niya pala naintindihan. Ganyan kasi ibang studyante eh, takot silang mag-raise ng question kasi feeling nila mapapahiya sila. So, isa din to sa challenges, there is of apathy. So, I guess, ang makakatulong sa kanila sa ganitong time is their parents. Okay? So, these are the strategies for teaching online. First, mag-focus muna tayo sa synchronous teaching approach. So, the kind of learning that happens in real time. So, with this, ang i-discuss natin are the tools for teaching, lectures, and assessment. So, what are the devices for teaching online class? Of course, our personal computer. So, syempre, dyan tayo uh, makikipag-chat-chat, makikipag-upload ng ating mga lectures. Of course, dahil tayo ay naka-video conference, kailangan natin ng headphone. Okay, if you have your microphone and speaker, pwede yun. Okay, pero kung kayo naman ay walang desktop, don't worry, meron tayong laptop. So, ang laptop, ayan yung gamit ko ngayon, meron niyang built-in microphone and speaker, pwede yan. Okay, also, ang tablet and mobile phone ay pwede rin pang synchronous type of learning. Pwede mag-video call sa mga cellphone and tablet. Okay? Next, in our internet connection naman, pwede ang wired, ang wireless, or ang Wi-Fi, and of course, pwede rin ang mobile data. Then, these are the tools in conducting synchronous teaching. Pinakauna po dyan ang Zoom. Okay? So, sa Zoom, 
kailangan lang dyan ng valid email. Pwede rin naman na mag-join ka without your email provided na meron kang link ng Zoom. Okay, so gagawa tayo ng um, tutorial para sa Zoom. Ito yung Zoom application na pwedeng gamitin para sa video conferencing. So, yung first step is to download the Zoom in your desktop or in your cellphone. Then, i-click nyo ang new meeting para makapag-create kayo ng sarili nyong video conference. So, ayan, may kita nyo. Yung background ko sa likod, medyo nalaglag na. Then, join with your computer audio. Okay? So, ang gagawin ko, imamute ko lang to kasi magbaback, ano siya, back sound siya dun sa aking i-coconnect na cellphone. Then, kung kayo ay mag invite ng mga estudyante nyo using this, ayan, i-click nyo lang yung meeting information, then copy link. Okay, then going back, let's say for example, dun tayo mag invite sa ating Facebook. So, right click, then paste. Okay, so dahil na isend na natin yan, Papasok na ngayon yung isa kong account dito sa ating Zoom. So, tingnan natin kung itura ko sa kabilang part. Okay? Ayan. So, we're still waiting. So, ayan, nakita nyo. Yung uh, account ko na Roselle Abila has entered the waiting room for this meeting. So, i-click natin yung see waiting room. So, ayan. May option tayo, of course, to admit yung ating student, or kung nyari, naligaw lang yan, edi i-remove natin. Okay? So, dahil yan ay official naman, i-add na natin yan. Alright? So, hintayin natin siya na mag, ano, okay, yan, dalawa na ako. So, as you can see, wala pa siyang picture. I-share ko yung video ko. Ayan! Okay, so, mapasin nyo yung aking green background, medyo nalaglag na. Cartolina kasi yan. Okay, so, Ayan na po. This is the live video conferencing for our synchronous um, online teaching. Hello. The Microsoft Teams. Dahil yan ay Microsoft, of course, kailangan meron kang Microsoft account. Kung wala ka pang Microsoft account, pwede kang mag-check sa mga videos na available sa channel na ito makikita mo ang Microsoft Teams kung paano yan nag-register. Kung paano nag-register kay Microsoft Teams. Okay? Next, we have Google Meet. So, si Google Meet, nagagamit ko na rin yan. Ang kailangan mo lang dyan is your Google account. Okay? Makaka-join ka na. And the link also. Yung link na nag-create or yung host ng mismong video conference. Ayan. I-type nyo lang sa browser nyo ang meet.google.com Okay? Make it sure na meron kayong Google account. Then, start a meeting. So, same lang din siya kay Zoom. Then, ayan, camera is starting. Hi! Okay, so, join na ako. Ayan, kung mapansin nyo, ito na yung inyong link. Pwede nyo nang i-copy yan, then join. Okay? O, copy, join, info. Copy ko na yan. So, ayan. O, diba? Parang laki ng face ko dito. Okay, so, i-mute ko lang to kasi ang gagawin ko, mag-open ako ng panibagong browser. So, I have here my Google Chrome browser. Ipipaste ko lang dyan. Bakit ko kailangan gawin to? Para hindi na akong buwas ang cellphone. Ngayon nasa cellphone yung in-open ko, diba? This time, another browser na lang. So, ayan. Camera is starting. Then... I don't think so na pwedeng mag... Oh, di ba? Failed. Kasi ginagamit ko na siya sa kabila. So, join now. Alright. Alright. Okay, okay. So, yun ako lang para, para hindi mag-bounce back. So, kung mapansin nyo, ayun ako. Tapos, ito yung aking student. So, kung show everyone. Okay, so ito siya sa gilid. Ito ako. Ito siya. Ayan, kung gusto kong mag-present, of course, ito yung aking present now. Then, kung gusto kong mag-chat dito, diba, pareho lang kay Zoom. Hello! Okay, so, kung mag-hello ako dyan, of course, dito, lumabas sa aking kabila. Ayan, meron akong chat. Ayan, 
Hello. Oh, dahil siyempre, hindi tayo papakabog. Hi. Okay, lumabas dito. And, of course, our Facebook Messenger. So, ayan. Sa ngayon, may bago ang Facebook. That is the Create Room. Pwede tayong mag- Um, gawa ng video conference using our Facebook Messenger. Dalawang klase kasi yan eh. Pag ka-Facebook mo siya, pwede kayong mag-video call in your group chat. For example, ang estudyante ay walang Facebook. Pwede doon sa create room ng Facebook. So, pareho lang naman sila ng um, functionalities and features. Yun nga lang, pag ang gamit nyo ay create a room using Facebook Messenger, Kahit walang Facebook account si estudyante, pwede. Okay? Then, yung pinakalast is the Facebook or the YouTube Live. Pag live kasi si teacher, ang nangyayari dito, pwedeng mag-comment agad si estudyante kung naiintindihan ba niya yung tinuturo ni teacher. Kapareho lang yan sa mga webinars na ina-attenda ni teacher. Na ba? Diba? yung mga host ng webinar na babasa nila yung mga comment kung kayo ba ay nakakasunod or hindi. Yun nga lang, pag Facebook or YouTube Live, hindi nakakaroon ng face-to-face -face interaction kasi ang nakikita lang ay yung video ni teacher. Pero yung video ni student, hindi nakikita kasi sa chat box lang siya pwedeng mag-comment. Next, how to distribute your lectures using synchronous teaching. So, pag gumagamit kayo ng video conference tool, pwede. Okay, so yung next naman na gagawin natin ngayon is to distribute our lecture using this video conferencing. So, to do that, ayan, i-click natin yung chat na nasa ilalim. Okay, tapos lalabas yung chat box dito. As you can see, meron ditong file. Ayan, nalaglag na ng tuluyan ng aking background. Goodbye. Okay, so yung file, kiklik ko yan. Then, your computer, kung ikaw ay mag upload lang. Kung ikaw naman ay may mga laman ng iyong drive online, then you can choose this. Dahil ako naman, I prepare na yung nasa computer ko, yung aking ilalagay. So, iya yeah, mag-open yung folder ko. Tapos, hahanapin ko siya. Let's say, for example, itong blended learning yung aking isi-share. So, click, then open. So, ayan, uploading na siya. So, hintayin natin ma-upload yan. Okay, doon sa mga, ano, sa mga gusto pang mag-share ng iba pa, yung student nyo, kung mag-share dito ng kanilang files, pwede rin. Same procedure yung gagawin, yung file na nakalagay dito sa baba, yung button na yan, i-click lang yan, tapos mag-upload. So, pwede silang mag-upload dito ng mga, uh, let's say, assignment nila or performance task. You can also upload your lectures in your Google Drive. So, for example, meron ka ng um, upload lectures sa inyong Google Drive. During video conference, pwede mo na agad na i-paste yung link ng Google Drive sa iyong video conference chat room. So, di ba? O, send nyo agad. Ito na mga anak ng inyong lectures. Pwede nyo nang i-access. Pwede naman, sabay. Online and... Uh, habang nasa video conference kayo, send nyo lang yung Google Drive link. Walang problema doon. So, isa sa mga option para makapag-distribute tayo ng mga learning materials sa ating mga estudyante ay ang paggamit ng Google Drive. So, pumunta lang po tayo sa drive.google.com at gumawa tayo dito ng sarili nating folder per subject. So, pwede ko itong i-click na new, then folder. So, for example, ang subject nyo ay computer. So, nag-create ako ng folder, then click create. So, kung makikita nyo, andito na yung folder ko na computer. So, i-double click ko lang yan. Then, next is, kahinapin ko naman dito sa folder ko kung nasaan yung file na i-upload ko. Let's say, for example, itong PowerPoint na ito. I-drag ko lang siya, pupunta dito kay Google Drive. And that's it makakapag-upload na ako ng aking files na kung saan pwede siyang i-share sa mga estudyante. So, the question is, how can I share this file? So, i-click nyo itong arrow na to, then, get shareable link. Okay? So, ayan. Pwede na siyang i-share. Nakalagay dito kasi is restricted yung settings. But if you will choose this, Anyone with the link, lahat ng bibigyan nyo ng link na ito, let's say, kung ko, nakalagay link copied, 
pwede nilang i-access yung laman ng folder ng computer lang. Okay? So, the other folder of your Google Drive, hindi nila mabubuksan. Also, via email, pwede kayong mag-send. For example, yung estudyante, ayaw niyang i-access yung Google Drive. Okay, other option is in email. Is send me teacher direct sa kanilang email. So, another way to distribute your lecture to your students is to simply go to your email. So, ako kasi, ang gamit ko is Google email. So, you can use your Yahoo mail, Microsoft mail, pero ako ito kasi yung gamit ko. Then, magko-compose lang ng message. Let's say, for example, kanino ko gustong ipadala yung aking file? Let's say, kay Marian. Marian.river Marianrivera na lang at gmail.com Then, yung subject is yung pwede yung title ng lecture mo or let's say, for example, ito yung module 1 for computer. Then, dito sa baba, may nakalagay na attach files. So, i-click mo lang yan then, you look for your lecture na i-attach mo or ibibigay mo sa mga estudyante mo. So, ayan, hinapin natin. Okay, so, ito siya. Yung aking lectures. Then, for example, itong paalala. Ayan yung aking isi-send. So, open ko lang. Okay, so, ayan. That's it. Nakapag-upload na ako. So, another option para maglagay dyan is dito sa ating folder, i-click mo lang, for example, itong computer fundamentals, then i-drag sa iyong message box. Automatic i-upload mo yan. Then send. That's it. Meron na po tayo. The Facebook account, of course, maraming gumagawa niyan, di ba? Yung usual na ginagawa natin, nagsisend lang tayo sa so estudyante. Gamit na kanilang Facebook account kasi mas marami ang may Facebook talaga eh. Maraming mga estudyante na hindi ginagamit yung email nila but lagi online yan sa Messenger. So this is the another way on how we can distribute our lectures through Facebook. So i-search natin yung estudyante natin. For example, i-search ko si Ezekiel. Then si Ezekiel, bibigyan ko siya ng copy ng lecture. So pwede ako mag-attach ng files dito. Add files. Then... Parang nag attach lang ako sa email ko. Piliin ko kung ano yung file na isend ko sa kanya. Let's say, for example, ito yung isend ko sa kanya. Okay? So, that's it. Then, press enter. So, if I want to send another lecture, so, ayan. Idadrag ko lang din ulit dun sa message ko kay Ezekiel. Ako, si Enter ko. And that's it. Nakapag-distribute na ako ng lecture through Facebook. Also, the Google Classroom. So, as you can still remember, meron akong apat na um, classroom tutorial ni Google. So, you can check that. Then, in terms of student assessment during synchronous teaching, pwede na direct sa video conference tool. For example, meron kang um, gustong pasagutan kay estudyante um, during your video conference tool pwede mo na agad bigyan ng feedback o oh, anak medyo mali ka dito sa part na 3 over 5 ka then pwede mo na agad i-correct what is the right answer for that okay then explain using video conference tool then of course the google form Pag Google Form, pwede mong ayusin yung response time niya. For example, gusto mo lang siyang i-open from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. So, ayun. Habang nag-online kayo, sabay kayo nag-chat, naka-video conference, then sila sumasagot sa Google Forms. Mas maganda yun kasi makikita mo na si student talaga yung sumasagot. In your Google Classroom, pwede nyo rin i-access yan habang nag-video conference. Sabihin mo lang sa mga estudyante mo, o sige, I-online nyo lang yung Zoom nyo, tapos punta kayo sa Google Classroom. Pwede kasi yun eh. Or kung gamit nyo Google Meet, i-online nyo lang yung Google Meet nyo, then paki-access na yung ating Google Classroom at mag-quiz na kayo. Okay? Kasi gusto mo silang makita eh habang nag-exam. Pwede po yun. Okay? Next! That is all for synchronous learning or synchronous teaching. Let us now proceed sa ating asynchronous teaching approach. 
So the student will have the ability to access and satisfy these requirements within a flexible time frame. Okay, so may time frame lang kung kailan nila kailangan tapusin yan. So these are the tools for asynchronous teaching, um, lectures, and assessment. So, for teaching an online class, pareho din sa ating uh, synchronous teaching, kailangan din natin ng personal computer. Remember, pag personal computer or desktop yung gamit natin, we need microphone, speaker, or headphone. Pag laptop, pwedeng laptop na lang. Pero kung gusto nyong gumamit ng headphone, walang problema. Or headset, pwede rin. Ganon din sa tablet and mobile. So, bakit ko... Uh, nire-recommend ang headphone kasi may ibang headphone na may noise cancellation. So, hindi masyadong naririnig kung maingay yung background. Let's say, for example, may electric fan. Nami-minimize yung noise. Diba? Kasi may noise cancellation siya. Tsaka, what if magkakapatid kayo na nag-online class? O edi ang ingay nyo nun? So, kung kayo ay nagka-headset, diba? Medyo may privacy kayo. Right? So, next... Ano ba yung pwedeng internet connection pag asynchronous? So, wired, wireless, or Wi-Fi, and mobile data. Pareho lang din sa synchronous. Okay po. So, tools in conducting asynchronous teaching. Ano ba yung mga kailangan natin gamitin tools para dito? Kung mapapansin nyo, uh, pag uh, synchronous, hindi na kailangan sabay na mag-online si teacher. So, first is the pre screen recording. So, Mag-record si teacher ng kanyang lesson. Ito kasing gamit ko ngayon, this is screen neumatic. Kailangan dito ay online. Okay? So, PowerPoint screen recording feature. Nagawa ko na yan. If you can check my blended learning or the other, yung ano pa ba yan? Paalala sa darating na balik skwela. Ang gamit ko dun is PowerPoint. Tinry ko din yan. Uh, sa so Facebook. Okay? Bakit under ng asynchronous si Facebook? Kasi kung si teacher ay magla-live, automatic, pwede niyang uh, i-save yun sa YouTube niya or sa Facebook niya para yung mga um, gustong manood uli, okay, or hindi nakasali during live session, ay pwede niyang i-access. Then, the Google Classroom. Bakit may Google Classroom? Kasi pwede mag-upload si teacher ng mga videos niya sa Google Classroom. Let's say, for example, nag-record ako using Freecam screen recorder or itong Microsoft PowerPoint. Pwede kong i-upload yan sa Facebook or YouTube account ko at sa Google Classroom din. Okay? Next, how can we distribute lecture sa ating asynchronous teaching type? Of course, pwede tayong mag-upload sa Google Classroom. Okay? Pwede rin sa Google Drive. Pwede rin natin i-email ang mga estudyante natin and of course, our Facebook account. Pwede tayong mamigay doon ng lecture. Then next is the student's assessment during asynchronous teaching. Google Forms. Pinakamadali kasi talaga yung Google Forms. Pwede yung mag-exam dyan. Okay? Then of course, the Google Classroom. Ayan, sa Google Classroom kasi may assignment, may quiz na kung saan pwede kang mag-set ng deadline kung paano mo uh, gusto ilagay. For example, for uh, kung Monday ngayon, Wednesday, gusto mo close na yung exam mo, pwede. Pasok pa rin siya sa asynchronous learning, okay? As you can see, uh, madalas na gamit ko is Google, di ba? Google Form, Google Meet, Google Classroom. Kasi mahirap yung paiba-iba ako ng account. For example, uh, may meeting ako sa Zoom, so panibagong account sa Zoom, panibagong account kay Facebook, panibagong account kay Google Classroom. What if isang account na lang yung gamit ko? Okay? Kasi may video conference naman kay Google Meet that is still Google. Pwede akong mag-exam sa Google Classroom. Okay? Pwede akong mag-exam sa Google Forms. And of course, sa YouTube, alam naman natin na Google lang din na email yung gamit natin. Okay? So, pwede talaga, very flexible talaga nung si Google pagdating sa mga ganito. Okay? Although, preference nyo pa rin kung anong gusto nyo gamitin, ito lang naman ay based sa mga nagamit ko na. Okay, so that is all for online distance learning. Again, isa lang ito sa mga modality na ino-offer ni DepEd para mag-continue ang ating education despite of this pandemic. 
Okay? So, again, online learning is not the next big thing. It is now the big thing. Okay? Thank you very much. My name is Teacher Zai. Bye-bye!